Hi people, and I just want to talk about um, what was brought to my attention this morning by Mandy. Now, obviously, always somebody goes beep beep when you're trying to make a video on that, it's, it's inevitable, but anyway, I should have maybe have logged out of that. Anyway, this Crown Prosecution Service, and yes, it's England, but it's still important, admits that all offences charged under the Coronavirus Act were incorrectly charged. Now look at the word down, incorrectly. No, unlawfully. The minimising of the words again, because they've got a strategy exit in place because they know what's coming. So they'll minimise the words, incorrectly charged. No. The whole thing is unlawful. So let's read on with this stuff then. Um, a freedom of information request has confirmed that zero prosecutions have been made successfully under the Coronavirus Act. The request asks since its inception how many prosecutions have, successful, have been made successfully under the Coronavirus Act. The response given on Monday by the Crown Prosecution reads as follows. Since the CPS started its review on finalised cases charged under the Coronavirus Act 2020 in April 2020 and up until February 2021, so we're talking about nearly a year, we found that all offences charged under the Act were incorrectly charged. Now let's look at the fact these characters have been doing this for years. They didn't get things incorrect. It's unlawful, is the word they're looking for. Unlawful. And therefore, we discontinued. Because they knew the courts could not enforce it. But they had to keep... Look, they weighed up. They says, look, what does it do? We, we get these masks, we get this compliance, we get all that funding through the billions for cronies, you know, that we get these jags all do it. So let's just say that, you know, we'll invest 10 million in the police to, to go about pretending that they're, that they're upholding these regulations and guidance and they've got the authority to do it, you know. So it's a good payoff, you know, it's a good payoff for them to do that. So to keep the lie going, you know, so they'll then come back when they see litigation coming their way because now people have got criminal records now people have paid these things which i always advise people not to do it because they were unlawful you know and then you have um people who are on bail for months and months and months you know and their liberty restricted one guy who's on our, our, our group um, had a terrible time, six months um, on bail. The bank, um, it was all about masks. These characters and costumes came out to him. And then basically, it was all dropped two days beforehand. Surprise, surprise. And the RBS offered him £20. What an insult. What an insult to people. You know, what would that work out about? 40p a day, 30p a day, I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, I've advised them to raise a small coin fraction, you know. Um, so anyway, let's look at this freedom of information. Um, dear Mr X or Miss X, Freedom of Information Act, and then it is the 10th of May, we're talking about a couple of days ago. Thank you for your freedom of information request and it received on the 20th of April 2021. Um, and there you have it, um, the response. Since its inception, how many prosecutions have been made successfully under the Coronavirus Act response? Since the CPS started its review on finalised cases, charges under the Coronavirus Act 2020 and April 2020 and up until February 21, we found that all of the offences charged under the Act were incorrectly unlawfully. Let's change that word. Let's take that little minimised word out. Unlawfully charged and therefore unlawful because 
there was insufficient evidence to prove the offences under the Act. There was no cases where a sub suspect was convicted under the Act as of February 2021. We've looked at the Civil Contingency Act now. We have somebody else who at the age of mid-40s has now been his data extracted from various procedures not adhered to by the police and he's now on the police database. So, there you are, if they think that's incorrect and discontinued, it was all unlawful. They knew the exit strategy from the beginning. They knew how much the funds to invest in the police and their PR stunts and, you know, the walking about with these face things hanging to them and mumbling underneath them. They do. Invest $10 million and look at, look at the, the outcome, you know. We're getting a willfully compliant public to roll their sleeves up and wear the masks and now they're on to passports. And of course, the costume made us have to do that. The solicitors who told you, no, these regulations and guidelines and blah, blah, blah. Now, you know, you can read this article for yourself. It was, uh, you know, uh, the links are there and things. You can take the links off it. And, um, you know, it just goes on to speak about, um, you know, human rights groups who've been hiding behind screens and never on the field and never have been about the compromise and things, you know. So, there it tells you all there. But you know, one of the things you have to ask yourself in this whole thing is that, um, you know, we go back to that other thing I put in my previous video. Now look at the wording. Look at the wording. Um, it's all there in plain sight. And this one says, the fixed penalty notices, you know, should all be reviewed, you know. They should all be reviewed, the fixed penalty notices. I encourage people not to pay them. Not to pay them. But you went away and paid them and you were feeding the monster. That's what you were doing. You've seen it on my arrest. I says, you have no legal stand under the Bully Rights 1688. To stand there and threaten me, mumbling something that you're going to threaten me with a fine. So they just decided to take my liberty away. My arrest was unlawful. It would not take a Philadelphia lawyer to work it out. It was unlawful. A biometric. See, because this is what they want to implement as well for you, for them to get used to. Oh, that's how the police is now. You know, even though their own procedures. 6.48, tell them they've not yet obscured the face. We've been through all this, you know. But it's just all muddled things and it's all things that went wrong, you know. And look at the ramifications for people, you know. Look at it, you know. And, you know, it just does make you wonder. We're talking about, I look at even the, the, this, um, you know, um, there's now this new judi judicial review about, um, you know, the nightclubs are going to um, take judicial review. 14 months down the line, you know, 14 months down the line, they're going to take judicial review about um, times they're allowed to open and how many people were allowed, are allowed in venues and things, you know. And they've got this top QC. Why would you be waiting until the end, or apparently, allegedly, the end of something to come in? Why would you not have just done this a couple of months into this stuff? Why would you not have done it? Because that there that we accessed, there's no legislation that states they could have done any of this about gatherings. So why have passed this on to various people? Just go ahead and do it. It's people's fear. You know, it tells you there the police had no statutory powers to intervene. But people have complied. You know, and also the thing about the churches as well. You know, um, this one here, you know, they waited a week before, probably paid something in the excess of £30,000 for judicial review, a week before they were allowed to be opened up. 
win that freedom of information thing, they could have accessed that. Would have said, open your churches up. You know, they turned their back on people and all this. You know, they turned their back on people, but they allowed their, their church halls and things to be used as COVID centres. You know, to be used as dragon centres. You know? So, you know, and making it, they're monitoring it and blah, blah, blah. You know, it's, it's, it's really, I keep saying, you know, but anyway, it's maybe because I'm Scottish, I don't know. But it, it's just there in plain sight. You know, it's there in plain sight and people really have to catch a grip of this, you know. You know, they've got their strategy exit all planned out, you know. There you have it there, you know. Regulations. And I've highlighted this time and time again. It is important to note that regulations are not laws. It's there. It's there, you know. Then here, you know, you've got um, ambiguity over the boundary between law and guidance creates three important risks, you know. And then it tells you in this great paragraph here, they have powers to enforce the law and maintain public order, but they are not empowered to enforce the government's guidance where it is more demanding than the law. If police forces do act beyond their powers, which they've been doing, and they know it, they've been doing it unlawfully, so then we get the minimised words, we were just muddled, you know. That's why the court had nothing to do with it. Come on, they were not going to they they were go um they were not gonna do that, you know, they weren't they weren't gonna do that at all. You know? They weren't gonna get involved. They weren't gonna have lawsuits come in the court's way, you know? That's why they panned it all out, you know. Um if police forces do act beyond their powers, they are vulnerable to judicial review. But you wouldn't wait fourteen months down the line for judicial review, you know. Any over any overreach also makes it more likely that the regulations themselves will be challenged in court. There is some uncertainty as whether the restrictions are lawful. No, just put there, the restrictions are lawful. So I hope this video helps you people. And you know, I'm getting together with some people um, over the next couple of weeks to see you know, where the next move is. We've got a plan in place to actually um, serve more stuff. And we'll, we'll not be doing judicial review. I would imagine it's a multiple action. Yes, they've got the page up and running. Um, we're just waiting on many people. Their cases now just getting dropped, dropped, dropped. It's telling you they're in plain sight. You know, go back to that, you know, um, incorrectly. You know, it's all in the wording. It's all in the wording to support them. To support them. No, let's change that. Take that bargain basement word out where I'm lawfully charged. I'll leave it at that, people, and um, I hope you have a good night.